Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. We're back, and we're here to bring you some more insights. And yes, <laughs> we're not here to uh, smooth things over, so to speak. We're just simply letting you guys know what we know and sharing what we feel with all of you, anybody that will listen. Uh, again, please do put out your prayers and your intention that there be peace, that the system will be exposed for what it is, which is basically one system, creating endless wars, endless misery, endless death and destruction in order to maintain its death grip stranglehold on power. Let's create something different. Yeah, and I could tell you right out, right, right out that at some point in time, the Trump Vance, who knows, you know, how that's going to end up looking. But this side, the right side, is going to be the side that ultimately ends up in power. Whether the election is given to the left and then taken back, whether it's a division of the states, whether there's, you know, literally civil war that breaks out. I don't really know, uh, honestly, uh, but what I do know is I know how the script is supposed to run. If we look to the Bible, if we look to other prophecies, if we can see what what's the bigger purpose here. Ultimately, uh, it, it's going to be this side, whether or not he's here, um, although he very well may be, and, you know, again... Many people have wondered, is he the one, the, the Antichrist, the beast, that gets the head injury and is miraculously escaped and, and survives? Well, we had a close call, didn't we? We had a second close call. Of course, you know, again, I do think there is more than one number 45 out there. I know. It's like, wh which one are they trying to take out? And do they know that they're trying to take a certain particular one out? Yeah, that, that's a good point. And well, I with the others. and then what do you do with the others? <laughs> well, that could be the miracle. Oh, you know, uh, you know, the, the one looks to have been taken out and then they just simply bring out number two or number yeah. three or number four. There is our miracles. So right here, this this speech that he gave here really, really uh, caught my ear. Let's see if I got the sound. Uh, I don't think they want the sound going here. Jacob Helberg. Jacob, thank you. Thank you, Jacob. Great job. Jacob. Uh, they're not giving the whole speech here. Basically, what he says is there is going to be no quote-unquote anti-Semitism tolerated in the upcoming regime. In fact, he basically talked about com combating it anywhere and everywhere. He spoke to a, a Jewish, crowd, uh, Jewish crowd of college students from Philadelphia, and he said that they would cut off funding for anti-Semitic universities, um, prosecuting civil rights violations, substantially tighter immigration vetting, deporting foreign nationals, uh, providing material support to designed foreign terrorist groups like Hamas, you know, deporting those foreign nationals to those groups, ending the Biden-Harris policy of holding Israel back and publicly undermining the war against Hamas, allowing Israel to pursue total victory, uh, maximum pressure policy against the Iranian Ayatollah regime. And, you know, this right here is Jacob Helberg, and that's what he was calling out Jacob here. Um, and Jacob is just saying, you know, there's one candidate, Kamala Harris, clearly represents the preferences of the Iranian regime. The other, whose very life is threatened by the Iranian government, he says, unabashedly stands with Israel. And also talked about the things that he did, such as when he was in office before. He recognized the Golan Heights as being under the control of Israel, moved the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, and, you know, other things as well, strongly supporting Israel. Keep that in mind as we see Russia hits ship carrying Western weapons to Ukraine. 
a dry cargo uh, carrier delivering missiles and ammo to Kiev was was struck. You know, this is it's almost amazing that it hasn't branched out yet. If this was truly not being restrained purposefully on one side, of course, it would have already you know gone up in a massive, massive fire. I want to also say uh, this. Remember, this was under 45's regime when the U.S. withdrew from the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty. This also limited how small um, the blasts could be. Now, why, why would you limit how small they could be? Because, again, you, you blur the line between conventional and nuclear. And, and here you go. I, and and who's going to go out with their measuring tape and see, you know, well, is this a little bit too big or too small or what? I mean, really, who's going to pick it apart after it happens? After it happens. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't be the who, you know, because that's all, you know, the plague and pestilence right. part. Uh, would it be the U.N.? Would it be, you know, I, I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, who really? I mean, again, none of these things, these things are usually for show. Um, they're usually to lay a baseline paradigm for the masses, but this is key in that it's giving us a message that the potential is there to actually have the use of these weapons in a very, very small manner. Again, what we get is what they're trying to bypass is what would uh, other extraterrestrials do? Yeah, would they get involved? And as you guys probably know, uh, if you've been following us a long time, we do uh, feel strongly that there are many other beings on the planet that have more advanced technology than we do on the planet right now. Uh, and they are living here too and there's also other people on other densities just outside of our frequency range that are living on this planet so when you have the big ones they actually literally tear the, f the fabric of space-time and what i want to also again reiterate i've said it before more than once i really truly feel that the beirut explosion which you know they say was basically just stored weapons and fertilizer all that type of stuff sure oklahoma city f building fertilizer yeah again the official narrative i don't trust it at all this explosion was m massive massive i mean it felt like a, a small nuke and there were plenty of uh, videos of people feeling the shockwave because uh, windows were blown out far away from where the blast happened. This, this was just an insanely powerful conventional blast, if it really was that. Yet there were videos that showed what looked like it might have been a rod, of, rod from God. Rods from God is something we know is very real and it's part of our military force these are um, rods of tungsten which are the size of telephone poles tungsten's very very heavy and they would be released from satellites that are currently orbiting up there and on impact they would have a blast very similar i think you know from what i've read very similar to what we saw in beirut so I really do think that Beirut uh, was a test run. And I do think, and we've gotten this from our guides again, that um, what they're planning is the initiation, the initiating events that are going to bring in the full-blown war is going to be um, a tit-for-tat strike, We're probably using something like this, something that's going to look like this, on, on U.S. cities and also Russian cities, likelihood of it being some of the other, you know, NATO countries is, is very high as well. Um, they've also telegraphed the use of what we would call um, tsunami bombs, you know, which that, that has been so telegraphed over the years. And they've literally talked about swamping the U.K., um, so, you know, have your plan just in case to maybe evacuate up to Scotland, you know, go to the highlands, uh, just in case, you know, again, just be aware of things and just f use your senses and, and feel into it. 
Your guides will be talking to you when the time is right. They will absolutely be talking to you. So we have to pay attention and do ask them for help. Just simply, you can say, you know, I'm asking for, for help from my angelic team. If that, if that resonates with you, uh, say it that way. I think we do the very best we can to help people feel comfortable of, with stepping into the spiritual world um, w without breaking barriers, beliefs, and, and things of that nature because we need to have that connection with our guides and angels somehow, some way. It's got to start somewhere because it can really help you. Oh, absolutely. Because if you ask, they will come, th come through. Look at this blast. This is in Lebanon. Israel just did this. This is massive. You could see um, many people are questioning what was that bomb? I mean, you know, this is the health ranger. It's Mike Adams saying, did Israel just use a tactical nuclear warhead? What was that? Too early, in, too early to know, but the blast signature will raise questions. Absolutely. This was huge. Whatever was under that was vaporized. Absolutely. They, they hit Lebanon with something gigantic. Look at that. That's not, that's not targeting, you know, one or two individuals. This is a populated area. This is just, you know, wiping out whatever is underneath it. Yet, in the time to come, I do not believe you're going to be able to really openly question this. This is where the real power structure is going to be starting to reveal itself. It already is. Um, so, you know, again, here you see different pictures of it. This was big and massive. And this is in a populated city. This is, you know, not good. And, you know, again, we were watching the Polish psychic, which I'm going to mention in a minute. And his impression was they are really holding back Russia, Iran, you know, the BRICS nations are really holding back um, and they're being taunted and tempted by Israel. And Israel says they're anticipating a major Hezbollah assault within the next 12 to 24 hours. And usually when we see responses, responses are um, very, very minimal. They're, they're definitely not on a par uh, with, with what we see Israel doing. Israel, once again, carrying out attacks like a terrorist group. So it says Erdogan. Now, this is the same Erdogan that's part of NATO, and yet they are seeking to join BRICS. Um, absolutely, uh, they're ready to jump on the BRICS bandwagon, and, and absolutely, they will be part of the attack uh, that does come, the reprisal. Because, again, it's been forewritten in the script. So, you know, here is Christoph, and he was saying, it's a plan. This is totally going according to plan. This plan was planned out decades and decades ago. You know, literally, I know that's hard for a lot to believe. It was literally planned out hundreds, if not thousands of years ago. This is all part of a script that gets replayed. Time and time again, like a, a bad rerun of Groundhog's Day with Bill Murray. Well, they have a different looking kind of calendar book than we do. So, Yeah, that's, that's true. And it's absolutely uh, Israel that's the prime mover in this. Ezekiel 38 uh, is basically, it's one of the well-known chapters of, of the times that we're in right now. And so when you look at it and you look back to the early manuscripts, really, what do we have dating-wise? You can see Codex uh, Chironensis. Uh, this dates back to 895 CE. There's another Peter, St. Petersburg uh, Codex of the Prophets dating to 916 CE, Aleppo Codex, 10th century. All about 1,000, you know, roughly 900 to 1,000 uh, AD, AD, not BC. There are some little blips of this that we found in the Dead Sea Scrolls, which may uh, date from around maybe 100 B.C. to 100 A.D., somewhere in that range. But you also have to know that, again, in, in the Hebrew um, scriptures, they didn't write in uh, the vowels. So, again, it was up to interpretation and there was revision that was always going on. When we look at the names of God, what does this say? It says it's Yahweh. 
that says Yahweh, one of the Elohim, one of the judges of humanity, one of the mighty ones, one of the ruling extraterrestrial overlords, that says what he's going to do and gives this prophecy. Now, again, many people will believe this prophecy is coming from uh, 3,000 years ago, but it, it, you know, according to the best evidence, it's probably about a thousand years ago. Uh, yet again, maybe not even that long in reality, as things are always revised. And it says, you know, I am against you, and it names some lands of those days, which no longer are, you know, terms that are used for the lands for the most part. For the most part, like Gog and Magog, uh, Meshish and Tubal. But you will recognize probably Persia, which is Iran. Sudan is still Sudan. And put uh, Ethiopia. Uh, and then also Gomer, some have equated to Germany and, and Central uh, Europe. Uh, and again, what it says is, I... I will pull hooks into you, into your jaws, and lead you like a fish to me, because I'm going to slaughter you. So this is basically Yahweh, the extraterrestrial, uh, again, Lord of hosts, uh, you know, that God of war entity, saying that I will orchestrate the events of these times in order to bring your armies up and against me in order to wipe you out. We have gotten that Israel truly has technology that no other countries have. The, the technology is given to them by, this, by these extraterrestrial entities that we're speaking about. Well, they do. They have, um, there's still a connection there, and, and there's still uh, protection in these places by these beings with their technology. And it's like an unspoken hand or it's an unseen hand. It, it's something that uh, I, they know that they have and they will utilize. It will be utilized for them if they need. So this is about, you know, kind of like teacher's pet will be taken care of. Yeah, or having an ace up your sleeve to play at any time. So how does it look? Well, these armies all come in. And they go to attack, and they're met with the biggest earthquake that we've ever seen, also with pestilence and plagues. As we've talked about, there is mention in the Hindu holy books that there is a group of asuras. Asuras are ba basically very, very service to self-oriented, demonic, uh, extraterrestrial, and interdimensional beings, of which Yahweh is really one of them, and this whole group is one of them. Uh, that come in and take over countries and and cities and in the old days would outright show themselves and you know the <laughs> everything was made for them you know the palaces the temples were all for them they got you know their their choice of any of the females in the land and this is how we have the hybrids and we have all that nephilim thing going on so when you're talking about nephilim you know uh, zeus you know he was one uh, frisky bugger, let's just say, and, and he sired so many children, and, you know, Yahweh is basically that same energy uh, that we're talking about here. These are, um, you know, what we would call fallen Anunnaki, so to speak, and so they manipulate it, they get the war to come in, they're telling you what they're doing, why are they doing that? Because then you're going to worship them because you'll believe that they are God. Just like, you know, scared tribal people would realize that they had no chance against the conquistadors. They shot the conquistadors with arrows and it bounced off because they were wearing armor. And, and the conquistadors would shoot back with, you know, rifles, muskets and take them out. And it was just a slaughter. And this is how a couple hundred conquistadors could wipe out tribes of 10,000 people in no time. They looked like gods. Well, again, extraterrestrials certainly have a lot more technology than us, and they uh, absolutely can control the weather, earthquakes, and definitely deliver plagues and pestilence. They're very good at that, and they have a lot of help with doing that you know, with a lot of humans that volunteer along the way. So, you know, it's, it's really brutal, and they say that the bodies are so big uh, that it, it takes 
seven months to make the land clean. All the common people are going to be burying in them. And, you know, there again, the people of Israel will be honored on the day of my victory, declares Adonai, which means Lord, Lord Yahweh, just like Lord Vader, isn't it? It's, yes, yes, yes absolutely. Look, I am your father. You, you can't, you know, Anakin, Anakin, Anakim. From the Bible, you have Anakim. What are the Anakim? They're a group of giants. Anakin, Anakim, Anunnaki. It's so, so obvious. You know, whenever they go through the land and see a human bone, they'll set a marker beside it until the grave diggers have buried that bone in the Valley of Gog's troops. Absolutely. Tell every kind of bird and every wild animal, come. It's a big sacrifice. It's a sacrifice of, you know, Yahweh again. And, and the fallen Anunnaki, a huge feast on the mountains of Israel with you know, humans. You can eat all the meat and drink all the blood you want there. You can eat the meat of warriors and drink the blood of the princes of the earth. All of them will be killed like rams, lambs, goats, and bulls, and the best animals of Bashan. Bashan was the land of more peaceful giants that were absolutely wiped out, as we had talked about. The, the interesting thing about Bashan they're 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 looking back in time to when this group wiped out the giants of Bashan and interestingly enough their their homes were left perfectly intact but not one soul was alive and there was n no bodies no bodies either just they just everybody that was living in these cities and we're talking hundreds of cities empty ghost towns nobody in there nobody in there well, the same system took care of them that's going to take care of the BRICS nations that go up against Israel in this particular um, battle here. So it's interesting, is it not, to see this? Very, very interesting. So what happens then? Well, you know, Israel is perhaps the most powerful nation on earth. This, by the way, is really one of the only depictions we have of Yahweh. Uh, maybe no graven images because he wasn't quite the looker. I'm just guessing. Yeah, no, he doesn't look very pleasant. and We don't really know what's going on in those pictures. It looks kind of awkward there. But, um, you know, my granddaughters could do far better than this. We don't know where this came from. But it, it's it's not surprising that it is so disturbing. What do you pick up on on the face? You know, what, what is this trying to represent? And is he wearing a crown? We, well, yeah, I mean, he's trying to represent his presence, his masculinity, his ability to lead, his his I, I am presence is what he's trying to represent. In that, I, I feel it. It's something that I feel. It's the I am. He's trying to say, uh, I am here, you know. You know, this picture reminds me of a of a joke that our dear sister Kay was telling us today. Where does the spaghetti go to dance? Yes, yes, yes. At the meatball. Yes. That was a great one, Kay. We love you. By the way, this is a map of greater Israel. Greater Israel. This is what they are currently manifesting. And interestingly enough, there was a plan given. Uh, Oded Yinin, 1982. Zionist plan for the Middle East. Is this really true? Is this really, really true? Again, there's been a lot of different um, psychics that have seen this. It, it certainly feels it's the case. Um, and actually, um, again, Christoph, the Polish psychic, was picking up perhaps after Lebanon, it'll be Jordan that has gone through. Next, um, as you can see, Syria is gone. Lebanon's gone. Uh, and even part of southern Turkey is taken over. Uh, most of Iraq is gone. A lot of Saudi Arabia. Um, maybe the more fertile part of Egypt, I would describe, is, is, is all part of a greater Israel. Greater Israel is real. Uh, the, famous, the infamous Oded Yinyan plan, or Yinyan. I'm always saying Yinyon, like Pinyon. Uh, again, 
this this is something that has been spoken of uh, for quite a while as we could go back to the Council of 300 uh, we could go back to a lot of other books that really you know their prophecies are coming true almost to the T and as you um, may or may not be aware of there was another rabbi Vilna Gaon who is hailed as one of the most influential Jewish Jewish leaders in modern history that also talked about the coming of the Messiah. Now, again, the Jewish Messiah hasn't come yet. They don't recognize uh, Jesus as a Messiah. They recognize him as a teacher, a great teacher. Because the Jewish Messiah would, and by the way, he's got a black rock on his head there, black cube, in case you know, you're wondering, just like the black rock on top of um, Trump Tower and the one at Mecca, and many other places, like in front of the company, Black Rock as well. Exact same cube, just like New Jerusalem. The Jewish Messiah is a war leader. And it is going to you know, bring about um, not just the full restoration of Israel and all the lands that they believe were promised to them by Yahweh, but a, a kingdom, a, a literal kingdom on earth. And so what he said was the Ukraine... Russian war is the beginning of this, and you're going to see the Messiah come about because of this war. So I wanted to share all this with you guys. Again, put out your best intentions for peace. Uh, we know this has all been planned for a very, very long time. We have to waken those that are still sleepwalking or still falling for the script in one way or another. Look at this little guy. You know, we could all have peace. We could all play with whatever it is that makes us happy and have a good time together, uh, we could do a lot of constructive things in this world if we didn't have the homicidal maniacs running the show. Things do not need to be running the way they're running. They're only that because so far, unfortunately, we have not put our abilities together and we have not manifested something different but this is a, a really really wonderful meditation that i hope you guys would please spend some time doing it's very deep it's very heartfelt it it means something and it will do something please spend a few minutes on this meditation say some prayers take some quiet moments and send this energy of love and togetherness send it out there i'm every all the changes start in our mind they all start with thoughts and this is a start this is a seed we got to get it out there absolutely this is from hearts home this is the uh the latest channel um 2.8 thousand um, of you guys have joined us over there this is kind of more the how-to and hands-on spiritual channel um this just uh, is something that i first published i think three or four years ago and it felt like inspired by the guides to word it in this way. Um, because again, if you just say God, you could be meaning a million different beings because so many, and, and literally million, there's been so many different beings that have been thought to be gods. Uh, it, it's not clear enough. In the same thing when you use a generic term like Lord. So I, I worded it this way on purpose and I'm gonna play it now. Hello my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. So guys, I wanted to give you this prayer, meditation, mantra, all of the above. Let this be a, a call for peace and change upon the earth. And I hope and pray that you guys will embrace this and share this and if it suits you to use it as is, use it as is. If you want to change it, change it. But this is a mantra that came to me, a meditation, a prayer. We call on the one true creator of all, the angelic realm, and peaceful, loving, benevolent beings that serve that one source of all, to remove from power the forces of darkness, control, greed, and destruction, that have been and are harming the earth and all the life that dwells upon it. We do not consent to their rule. We do not recognize their authority. 
We no longer accept their making decisions for us. May they be removed from power. May love, compassion, peace, and unity be restored to the earth. And may the door be sealed where evil dwells. So I will leave you guys the link for that. Look forward to your comments. Thanks for your support again on Patreon and Ko-Fi. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.